What's up, YouTube? Dark God back again with day eight of the October Horror Movie Challenge. Today's a, a special video because the previous two installments of this, the, the previous two October Horror Movie Challenges, day eight is the last video I made for both of those months, uh, both those challenges, rather. So hopefully this isn't like the, the two previous ones where I, I die out at this video. Um, I mean... I, I seem like I'm plugging along and I'm getting everything out there. So I'm hoping I, I finish this strong. So today's day eight. You'll see me tomorrow for day nine. So I, I pass all these by and uh, I, I break the streak of failing on day eight um, and hopefully get to day 31. Today, anyway, was a very slow day. I only watched um, two films. watched uh, one older film and then I watched the, the pick of the day for uh, DVDtalk.com. Uh, the older film I watched was The Mummy's Ghost, I think it was. Um, was it Mummy's Curse? I think it was Mummy's Ghost. It's fourth or fifth uh, uh, Universal Mummy film, and it's one that they bring into America as opposed to being in uh, Cairo. And it's just a different take on the Mummy movie. I mean, you still have Lon Chaney Jr. in it. Um, you have uh, I could have swear there was somebody else in it that was a uh, oh, um, Carradine was in it. One of the Carradines was in it, and uh, it's it's that classic Universal style. It's it's. It's fun. It's it's done well, but uh, by the fourth installment, it's kind of like a throwaway. Um, it has has its cool moments. Uh, seeing the mummy, you know, run through a, a college town is is something that's uh, worthwhile. I think um, it it's fun, but it's not like the mummy, the original mummy, and the mummy's hand is bad. But I mean, the the mummy itself is good. And then a couple years later, after this, you're gonna have the the Hammer films when. Uh, uh, Peter Cushing takes over. I'm sorry, uh, Christopher Lee takes over, and I mean those films are just phenomenal. On top of it, so I mean this is kind of what sandwiched you between the the original Boris Karloff mummy and and the uh, Christopher Lee mummy. So I mean you get what you get, but it's a decent movie. Probably give it a five out of ten, five and a half out of ten maybe. Uh, it's worth it. I mean if you're a horror fan, I think you should see every Universal horror film. I mean there's only I think there's only like 40 or 50 of them total. I mean, over the course of your life, you could see them all. And then just revisit the classics when you have to. Revisit the Dracula. See the Spanish Dracula, too. I mean, that's something to do. Frankenstein and the original Mummy. The original um, uh, Invisible Man. Just, I mean, there's there's a lot they could be watching that's that's fun in there. I mean, it, it's a good watch, but it's, it's not up there with the classic Mummy films. I mean, I... I dare say I even put it probably below the the Brendan Fraser uh, mummy film, which is kind of crazy, but it, I mean it's a fun film. It's you know it's a popcorn film. Anyway, you know the whole opposite side of the spectrum. The pick of the day was Hereditary. Now, this is a movie that like all year you keep hearing. Like I, I think on Reddit they have like they do their um uh, their their subreddit did their voting for the top horror films of all time, and Hereditary made it into the top ten. You know, so th I mean, that's big, like, to, to see a film like that. And it gets compared to uh, The Witch, which came out last year. And uh, The Witch was very decisive, um, very divisive. It A lot of people either loved it or they hated it. I was on the love side. Like, I thought The Witch was awesome. The ending of that film is amazing. Um, and it, Hereditary is, is getting that same kind of uh, feel. Like, uh, I had friends uh, last week, right before the challenge started, they asked me, hey, did you see Hereditary? And they told me, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And they both said um, that they liked it, and they read up on it, and it made them appreciate the film more. You know that there was things that you know they didn't catch in everything, and and it, you know that that was cool going into it. I knowing that, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, like the first forty five minutes of the film, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be on the hate side of this because to me this is very boring. You know, and then there's a a big scene happens um, with one of the characters that you don't expect, and that kind of like brings you back in you know to to see this the, the storyline keep going you want to you want to see more and then once the stuff starts going wrong like once the uh i guess i'll say the creepy stuff starts happening that film totally changes like you are not doing anything but watching every little thing on screen because everything is something going on and it just works and tony Klett is an amazing actress um She's just, she's perfect in her her role. Like you don't you don't know the whole time what is going on is if if she's crazy if somebody else is crazy if if all this stuff is actually happening like you have no idea like there's so much discussion in the in the whole movie about um, uh, 
like mental health and, and mental issues and everything and you don't know if that's that's where this is falling at and then it, it just builds up builds up builds up now i'll say i didn't really care for the ending when i first watched it reading up on it yeah you do kind of get a better appreciation for it like you little things you didn't pick up on like i i didn't get what was happening with the one character and towards the end like I, I was thinking like she was acting out of character, but then it kind of you you read up why she was acting out of character, and it makes a lot more sense. And then it gets into all like the creepiness of like demonology and and um, cults and everything, and it just it, it works on such a phenomenal level. Um, I don't know if I put it in my top ten per se. I mean, I don't even know if I put it in my top twenty or top thirty, top forty. I mean, horror is just so ingrained in my my psyche and my my brain that i mean there's so many films from the 80s that i just love and love and love like hereditary is a good film like i do want to show it to people like I, I want my wife to watch it to to see like how it goes to the creepy level i mean and it it is creepy when it when it breaks down and everything and starts happening like just like the stuff in the background just happening behind people like it's just so creepy and it, it just works uh so well done it's it kind of reminds me it's filmed like kind of like an art house film at times it feels like um which it you know it's obvious that like there's a reason behind it. like there's a lot of stuff with art and um artistic ability in the film like the one uh the main character tony collette she's like um she designs like these dioramas and stuff and her daughter is um makes these like little tchotchke type things and there's there's that emphasis emphasis on like the art side of everything so i i do feel like that's like a, a it's a tr trick that the director used to like kind of you know put a touch on it where look i'm doing the art stuff too here and um but it's not over it's not like an art house movie where you know if you're not into art house, house movies you do not like art house movies like if, we, if you're not into it and you see an art house movie it really sticks out as boring to you that's not like this like there's just little shots that just remind you of it i mean this is a, a true storyline driven picture but it's just there's so much stuff to add to that storyline like you have to catch what people say at times you have to catch like stuff in the background symbols and stuff i mean it's just very well layered film it's it's a film like i already want to revisit it just to see what i missed the first time watching it just to see like like what i read and that people explain stuff like i mean it, it's not like it's a hard film to get like you like will watch it and you will understand what is happening but it just kind of like little things might like surprise you and you, you need to get a i guess a, a like more pinpoint accurate description of what happened like you might view it as one way but you just want to see what is really happening that's the only thing uh but it, i mean it it's amazing seven and a half out of ten uh best film so far i've seen all october horror movie challenge uh it's just a, a great great film very well done and our directing's amazing i mean like it, it you know I, i'll be doing my oscar films later on you know in january february um this is a film that like for directing for for story should be like oscar contention but you know horror is just not their thing and it, it always gets that bad spot i mean you know I, I know they say like films like you know science of the lambs one so you know they like horror but it's it's really not and I mean, it, it should be in contention for directing, writing, cinematography. Um, Tony Collette could, should be in for actress. Um, it's just a very, very well done film. Very highly recommend it. Like I said, I already want to watch it again. I'll probably see if I can find, uh, maybe I'll pick up like the Blu-ray or something so I can watch with commentary just to hear him talk, maybe maybe explain more of, of what, why stuff is a certain way, why, like, why things are viewed a certain way storyline stuff why people do certain things so we'll check that out but until then uh day eight i'm hoping you see me tomorrow for day nine so i could break this streak of terrible outings in these october horror movie challenges but uh until then i will catch you on the flip side